Hello, everyone. Hello, it's Cheryl from Tinker's Card Art, and I am here with you today to paint another fun little hell of Halloween <laughs> Valentine's Day project. So let me just get organized. How is everyone today? Say hello when you come on in. And you know I love to see where you're watching from. So I will bring up your comments here today. And um, let's see. Say hello when you come on in. Thank you, guys. Happy Monday. It's going to be a fun day, um, a good week. Sun is shining. And um, I know the weather might not be as nice in other parts of the country. I know there was some snow up, up in the northeast um, again yesterday. But um, anyway, I thought we would paint something with hearts. It doesn't have to just be for Valentine's Day. But it is going to be heart themed, and there's so many directions we could go with this. Hi, Diana. So let me switch around because you don't need to see me. You need to see my hands and my work. So hi, Tarita. Thank you for stopping in. And and Tracy, hello. Thank you. I thought I would do a little quick demo um, of uh, gold leaf. I don't know how many people have tried gold leaf in their crafting. Hi, Lisa, and happy Monday morning to you too. I've done some projects lately with some gold leaf. Um, I'm just grabbing because I have some here and I have some big paintings. I sometimes incorporate bits of gold leaf in the, in the background of some of my more abstract paintings. Um, I love it because it's metallic and it is more uh, metallic, of course, than you can get with your metallic acrylic paint, which works also. But hey, Lynn, hello. So what I've done here is I've taken a little uh, gallery wrapped canvas. I painted it with that teal color. Then I added the gold leaf, and I'm going to show you that little demo as well. And so see you have the gold. Where I, where I apply adhesive for the gold leaf is where everything is going to stick for the gold leaf. Hi, everyone. Hey, George. Hey, Cindy. Um, so this is a little background that I'm going to go ahead and paint something on. I'm not sure exactly what. I think maybe a, a little bit of a floral, some roses maybe. Um, oh, Diana. Oh, good. Yeah, I, I haven't used it in a long while, but I started using it recently. So this is another, um, you know, I don't have my Valentine's painting, which I'm doing in my membership. Um, it's releasing today. You might have seen me show it or you might have seen or take a look on my page. It's in with my Valentine's decor in the house. So I used the gold leaf there. And then we did a few more projects. So this is just a little wooden panel. And I've only got my background on so far and my gold leaf tree. And then I'm going to paint on the tree. But let me show you how it works. I have applied some adhesive to some little boards here already. It takes about 20 minutes or so for the adhesive to set in order to add the gold leaf. So we're going to paint the hearts, and then I can come back and show you a little bit about the gold leaf. Hi, Cecile. Good afternoon um, from Maryland. I am coming to you from Florida. So what I buy is the speedball. Uh, let me grab the, the box so you can see it. So you can get the speedball gold leaf kits. Comes with the gold leaf, which looks like this and it comes in little sheets of very filming um gold leaf uh diana i just used the kit so i am going to use the speedball adhesive that comes with it there's also a sealer that comes with it i think from what i've read up you can use mod podge and other types of things to uh do it with but I, since i buy the kit i buy the sheets the adhesive and then a bottle of the sealer as well um and that's what I've used so far. But I don't know if you buy the individual sheets by themselves. Perhaps you could use Mod Podge or something. But uh, I've only used the Speedball. So let me go ahead. I've just sketched on some hearts and with some crowns. I thought those funky, fun crowns, put it in the gold metallic, and then we can paint little jewels on them and things. But let's just paint the hearts first. I simply, you know, I, I have these little wooden panels. I went on to Amazon to order my wood panels. I usually get a heavier, thicker, like a one-inch gallery, uh, not gallery wrap, but a one-inch panel, cradled panel. And for some reason, I must have ordered the wrong ones. And it was a great deal because I got off a lot of these, but look how thin they are. So I thought they might be good for something. And so I have a whole bunch of these. So all I did was take some acrylic paint and paint on a background. And that's where we are here. Sometimes I just streak the background with a little bit of the tealy color with some white so it's not a perfect background. This one is a little see-through. I don't want it to be perfect, so I just put one coat, quick uh, little coat with a big flat brush with some acrylic. Let it dry. Sketched on a heart. I actually, if you would like, um, you can always just, you know, do this what we did for hearts out of paper. 
make it the size you need it, and then you could trace it on with chalk. I do like chalk so that I can erase it easily. Um, Dahlia, hello, hello, and Vicki. Thank you guys, we got a nice group here. Thanks to you guys for all popping in. Um, hey, Daryl, good afternoon. Um, so let's just start painting the hearts, giving that adhesive time to set. You can't really see it. If I tip it, you can kind of see. So I have taken just a brush, a acrylic brush, Use one of your older brushes. It does uh, do a job on your brushes and make sure you wash them out pretty quickly with some soap and water. Hey, Pam, nice to see you here again. I just simply took the adhesive, put a thin coat on where I know I want the gold to go. That's how I started. Base coat, sketch the design, adhesive where the crown's going to be. Let's just paint some of these hearts in. I don't know how what I'm going to do with them yet. I think I might just paint sort of maybe a little bit of an abstract uh, design in the heart, maybe just some different shades of pink and red. There's lots of things you could go ahead and do with the heart. You could personalize it. Um, you could write something. I'm going to just paint them in for now and then we'll kind of decide what we'll do. I've seen some really cool little painted wood panels like this with really abstract hearts on them. I've seen some where people just kind of apply dots of paint and then paint uh, with their brush spreading all those dots around. If you look on Pinterest and, and Google, you know, and look and search for some heart ideas for painting, you'll come up with all of those. I'm simply just taking a flat acrylic brush and just putting a couple coats of red paint. The red that I really love and use quite often and pretty much most the red that I always use is the Tuscan Red by Deco Art. I'll tell you, it's a fabulous red. You can uh, add some yellow and get more of a warmer red if you'd like. You can add a little Payne's Gray and get a cooler. So I like it. It's a nice middle of the road red. I use it for all my Christmas things and uh, pretty much anything when I paint red, I use that Tuscan Red. Uh, hi, Tammy. Oh, Tammy, great. You're here. My friend from Worcester. I hope you're doing well. Nice to see you. And Brenda, thank you for sprinkling. It really helps us creators here to get out there if you would um, simply, this is very simple to, to, to do. Just when you see us on, give us a comment, a like, an emoji, uh, sprinkle it out. It is a great way to spread, um, spread the joy. Creating and, and painting brings me joy, so much joy, and I love to share it. And I wanna say welcome to my Tinker's Cart Art followers, thanks for showing up, and also Craft Around the Clock peeps. And if you are not familiar with Craft Around the Clock, it is a page description. You'll see the link. It's live crafting every 45 minutes uh, during the weekdays. It's a great, great community. I, I, I urge you to check it out. Sprinkle Diana means to the word that they don't like us to say is share. So if you just let your friends know that we're here, that um, it's just the weird algorithm that uh, dictates what we can do here. And uh, I love to create and I love to paint and um, I love to be here with you guys doing it. It's kind of more fun than painting all alone. So I'm so glad to see you all here. Thank you. Okay, just got a couple of base coats. Because of these colors underneath, the red is very dark and maroon-like, which I like. I like to start dark a lot of times. That gives me a room to add some brightness and some pinks and some bright colors. So I don't mind that. And Juanita, hello. It's so nice to see some of my Tinker's Cart uh, peeps here and some of my art membership peeps. I, peeps, I do have a, a art membership, and it's great to see you guys turn up when I'm here on my Craft Around the Clock segments. So thank you. 45-minute segments here. We start at 12.15. We have until 1 o'clock. And I'm so take life, but, you know, <laughs> without planning too much, I never decide what I'm doing. So it, I realized it was like quarter to um, quarter to one and 12 rather. And I had to figure out what I'm painting. I knew I wanted to paint Valentine's. Um, I bought a big heart cutout from Hobby Lobby the other day that I want to paint on, but I had to prep that. So I figured these would be quick and easy. And since we've been doing a lot in the membership and on my other page with Gold Leaf, I thought it might be fun to do some of that. So I'm giving the adhesive a little time to dry. It looks like it's pretty well set, but I want to uh, one quick one more quick coat of the red on there, and then we will. Uh, I'll probably dry it up because I want to not have the little bits of gold leaf that are going to come off into my wet paint. So let's put a quick coat of red on here, doing two at a time, um, just to show you different backgrounds. 
And actually, I was going to do one just to show you how I put the adhesive on, but it's so simple. All you do is take a little brush and brush on the adhesive where you want it. It's really not something um, that I had to do for on camera since we just have limited time. So anyways, quick second coat of red paint. And I'd love to hear what you guys are working on and if you've tried the gold leaf yet. So, um, <clears throat> Selena, yes, I have to try to remember to put them on YouTube too. The recording is always on my page. You'll see it if you just scroll back. And I do try to upload pretty quick to YouTube these segments. So keep an eye on it. And, and if you don't see it sometimes, feel free to send me a message because I just, it goes out of my head sometimes. I have a million post-its around here. I would love it. Uh, and I don't mind it if you, of course, at any time have any um, comments or, or questions, but also if you don't see something, uh, I can help you find it. So it's kind of a little, Cindy, it's a little um, odd uh, to use, but I don't need it to be perfect. I don't mind it being a little lumpy and little crackles through it. I kind of like that look. So I'm not looking after a perfect surface, which I don't know if you'd ever really need. So you'll, you'll see what I do here. Let me go ahead. I'm going to just hit this with my heat gun to dry the hearts. We'll put on the gold leaf so you can see that process. That's what I want you to see most. And then we'll do some little de decorations on the crowns and on the hearts. I'm going to mute you for a second so you don't have to listen to this. And I will be right back. Let's just do that. there. I think that's dry enough. The gold leaf comes in these little books, these little sheets. It also comes with a little piece of acetate, although I had a great suggestion from my friend Rita the other day who said wax paper works perfectly for this, but I just have this little acetate sheet that I'm just going to use to transfer it on. Um, to be honest, I just discovered that that was what I was supposed to do with that little acetate sheet uh, the other day. So I feel kind of dumb because these little sheets are super flighty and flimsy and they almost float away. And I was placing them very carefully <laughs> like that. But look at what, um, how easy it will be when we use the little transfer sheet. So these are just separated by a little piece of almost like tissue paper. I'm going to take my little piece of acetate here, a little plastic sheet, and I'm just going to pick up my piece of gold leaf with it. So how much easier is that than what I was doing? So I've got my little gold metallic sheet here, and it's just easier to hold in place with the plastic. Uh, Cindy, let me see what these are. I think they're six inches, six square. I get them on Amazon. Like I say, usually they're an inch thick. These are super thin, but I think it might be fun to do a whole series of them and hang them together. So that might be cool. Okay. So I am going to just move this one first. And this sheet of paper is probably going to cover my whole crown. If I have a big piece I'm working on, I sort of piece it, but I'm going to just lay this on. And I use a soft, just a soft mop brush to sort of adhere it burnish it, I guess, onto the adhesive. Now, I'm not gonna use a credit card or something hard like that. You could go with a soft cloth. I am just using this mop brush for now. I've still got the little piece of acetate there. And then I'm going to peel it off and let's hope it has stuck. No, oh, it's not sticking for me. Let me see if I rub it a little more. I could very well have let the, um, Maybe not. Maybe I do need to. Um, I know you can use a soft cloth. Let me try this. I think maybe I need to burnish it on there a little more. That's the great thing about live, you know. <laughs> I'm um, never sure how things will come out, but let's try this because it should adhere. And if not, I can just re-wet the adhesive. It's, it's, I know it's finicky looking, but it's a little forgiving. Let's try now to see. Okay, so it's starting to stick a little bit. I, I have a little feeling that that it's maybe um, not sticky enough, but let's go ahead and see what we can do here. Okay, yeah, there we go. Okay, 
So then to remove it from the places so it's not going to stick where there's no adhesive, I still use this little brush and I sort of start um, just scooching it away. And again, like I said, I don't mind if it's a little bit kind of craggly and whatnot. I want kind of a rustic kind of vintagey look of this. And I'm going to go ahead and re, I'm going to go ahead and try a little bit of that other one, but I'm going to also see if just putting some more adhesive on kind of helps. So it's a little rough. It shouldn't be, it should be a little bit neater. But there's a way to kind of keep adding the gold back in. But you can see how nice and shiny it is. It's pretty cool. Let me just try quickly on this one. And if not, I'm going to go ahead and put down more adhesive. Now, you don't have to have that big perfect sheet. As a matter of fact, all these little bits I'm uh, brushing away, I save. So it doesn't even have to be a big flat sheet. You can certainly just use pieces. Let's see if this one is a little bit better. Yeah, see, that's kind of sticking more where I wanted it. But I do see that some of the adhesive has uh, come off there. It is finicky, but I just love the look of it. I love some of the pieces I've done recently. And if you do mixed media, um, journaling, that sort of thing, some of this in the back is really cool. Yes, Diana, I am taking those little pieces and saving them in a little jar. And I can even use them, even though they're little pieces, I could take little pinches of them and apply them because I like that little layered kind of a look. So give me a second to put a little more adhesive over here where I want it. And I guess after all, you get to see how I do put that on. So it's just looks like just a Mickey. It looks like white uh, watered down Elmer's really. And I'm just going to put it where it did not stay. I think I had done it too early and uh, let it sit too long. So I'm just going to go back in some places where I want to just fill in. I want this to look a little more like a crown than this kind of a little mess we have going on here. So I'm just going to paint that on, neaten up the edges, and give that a little second while I'm working on the other one. And it is a little hard to see, but if you tip it, you can usually see where it's a little bit shiny and reshape that. Okay, I'll sit that there for a minute. I really gotta be careful about um, putting the cap back on there. I have spilt the adhesive many times and then it's a real mess because all these little bits just stick to everything. And I see I have a little bit of adhesive there. So yes, afterwards I take a couple credit cards and I gather up these little bits and I put them in a little, it's actually a little toothpick container. And I know I need a little more adhesive on that. I, I dropped a little drop of water on that when I was painting it. So I think I need to just redo that little bit of adhesive. And it doesn't have to be a thick coat, just a little thin coat of that stuff works. Of course, I feel all sticky now. <laughs> all right, I'm going to remove some of the extra bits. Now it's kind of sticking to my hands because I've got all of that on there. Lay that down there. There. I kind of like that dark green background with the gold there. And I'm going to put that aside for a minute. Let that set for a second. I'm going to hit that with a heat gun for one second. And I will mute you so you don't have to listen to that noise. All right. Yeah, the dark background works nicely. Let me just kind of clean some of this off my hands. And, and, and you know, you can get better lines because look at the tree. I did do a nice thin uh, line of the adhesive and it still chips off in places and is a little rough. But uh, I think the timing on this one was a little off. But you're going to get the idea and you're going to be able to uh, try this. And I think I even have a little demo on my page of me doing it again. Um. The kits aren't terribly expensive either. I forget, it might've been under $20. It comes, like I said, with all the things. 
and I just want to get a little bit more over here. I can maybe save some of that sheet if I do this again. I'm going to be like Goldfinger from James Bond. Uh, uh, with my paper towels. Yeah, it has been... I, I will have to post, if you watch the page, I'll post, I did a big, big floral and just in the background, just kind of again, like I do with my paint, my big abstracts and sort of paintings, just toss paint at the, at the canvas, let it drip, get it kind of, kind of mixed media looking. And then I'll put blotches of the gold leaf and then I paint over it. So it doesn't all show, but where it peeks through some of the parts of the painting is pretty cool. All right, so I'm just going to put a little more on here and see if I get a little better definition I do of the crown there. And I will worry about gathering these little bits up later. Don't I do save them, like I said, but you don't have to worry about them right this second. So I'm going to go with this one. It's rougher than usual, but I kind of wanted that look for this kind of see-through, crackly, a little bit. So what I would do is just wipe off what I can. I do usually clean up this mess in the, as I'm going because it does drive me crazy. But yeah, and Diana, the adhesive, and it also comes with the same kind of little bottle actually right here, and it's a sealer. And that you can put on afterwards to just maintain the uh, sheen and everything of it. So I just want to get the little bits off now so it doesn't get caught in the other part I'm painting. And let's see what we can do with our um, heart. And some jewels on the crown. I'm just going to move this a little bit away. So a couple of old, you know, cards. You can just scoop that up and save it. Uh, the pieces that I'm using, when you saw me use this little piece of square acetate, it came with the kit. It's in the front of the uh, little package. But I um, have not tried it, but I think wax paper works very, very well, too, to pick up those pieces. These pieces, I just take a couple credit cards and I... Dump it in the little bucket. Okay, so now, even any little pieces I can sort of just scooch off. All right, so let's paint something on the heart. It could be just, I've seen little abstract designs on there. I think I'm going to use some shades of pink and uh, red, just so it's not all solid like that. And... You could go over it after. I may just go over it with my paint marker, like a Posca marker, which I've got plenty of those here. I'm going to grab that. Actually, I've got lots of fun colors of Posca markers. So again, it really lends itself ideally to mixed media projects, really. Okay, let's get the, something on the heart here. I'm going to go a little more red. I sometimes like the look of just the brush strokes. Uh, showing. So if I did a few brush strokes, say, of the red, just so, to get something to mix in, dry that off. I don't need to wash my brush off. Maybe go in to some pink. Now, very, you could really just use white and your red and get different shades. I happen to ha have just purchased some new pinks. And you know I say all the time, just use your primaries. You can mix everything, which is so true. And then you go into the store and you see these incredible colors and it's like, Oh, I don't mind getting a little bit of this and that to try on projects. So, so I just want to look a little textured. I think I'll take my dirty brush, mix it in with some white now, and maybe just like the dark in the background. You know how I like have a dark, a mid-tone, a light. And I'll just go more in the center with the light light so it almost looks a little bit like it's uh, three-dimensional, like it's a little puffed up there. Now, you could very well take your dark maroon edge of your heart, fill it in with the red, and then the white in the middle like this, and then really blend it. I like the look of it being a little bit more seeing the brush strokes, but if you wanted a very nice, smooth, blended heart, super easy to just keep your brush dry and you just soften, soften, soften those strokes. I myself kind of like the look of it being a little bit more uh, brush strokey like this. But I like to show you that I'm I like to show you what I do and how I do it. I don't expect you to follow it exactly. I like you to do your own thing. So there I've got some uh, lights in the middle. I might get a little dark to brush in on the edges. Hey Mary, how are you? Oh, so Diana, do you have some gold 
leaf already? Try the Mod Podge, and I bet you could seal it with that as well. Um, so if you already have just the just the leaf, I, I would Google it too, because I can't remember if I saw people saying they would use uh, Elmer's or not, but I think I did see Mod Podge. I'm going to make up a bit of a maroon with just some red and paint gray. Because maybe under the crown, I might want it to be a little darker. Maybe on the very edge. I kind of like that dark on the very edge. So it's just a little paint gray or black with your red. I always mix up my own maroon. I, I buy the, the uh, craft paints with the maroon, but it's never deep enough for me. I kind of like to have it a little darker. I like that dark edge, but I don't want to leave it just as a line. So I'm using these little crisscrossy brush strokes. And I just like that dark edge a little bit. Now, I don't know, suggestions for the inside. It could very well do a Valentine saying. Um, I might just do some little line work with my Posca markers, though, and just make some little details that way. <laughs> Diana Flaky, just like the um, just like the gold leaf, which is pretty flaky. All right, so let's get um, and I may even spatter the background. I kind of want it to have that that look, that mixed media look. And let's see our crown. I've, I've googled some crown. I've saved some cool crown pictures that I've seen over the years with in mixed media, which I really love. So we want to maybe just paint some fun little shapes. Uh, I'm not going to make a per if I was painting a perfect crown and I would do all the jewels with the little things around them and all the shading, but I'm looking more for kind of a fun, uh, funky kind of a look, I guess. So let's get some jewel colors. We might do a blue, we'll do a, like an emerald green. I am just going to maybe paint maybe something like this, like little jewels. And I'm going to just use my brush and just dry it off. I want some of this uh, emerald green color, which is kind of nice. Maybe for, um, maybe I could do some circles and some, so just like they're going to be jewels. We've got to put a few coats to get them to cover well. Oh, a purple, like a nice dark purple would be a great jewel color. Uh, let's see what I can pull out here. So colors that are going to show up on that nice uh, shiny background. Let's try a purple. And I want, again, I want a couple coats because I want it to be solid covered. And I think we could do little jewels up on the little bits up here, maybe. I'm just going to, oh, and we can do some red, like the hearts. So let me just go into some of the reds. But think about some ideas what you would like to see in the heart, too. Um, and I wanted to see. Any comments, let me know. Again, thank you guys. We have, we've got almost 20 minutes left. So let's kind of play around with this. What are the jewel tones? I think we've covered most of them there. So let's just make a few more. We'll do blue up here. And I'm putting second coats just to get them a little more covered. Yeah, do I have a better green than that? I don't know about the metallic colors for that on top, too. That could work. I think I want to get my um, phthalo green. It's a nicer shade. And I actually, well, I guess I don't have any out. I thought I did. I want it a little deeper than that. Okay, a few more colors. So you can layer it. You can put it on top of something. You can add layer on top. And I think I'm going to put more random little jewels. It's going to be a very jewel-y crown. More purple, maybe. And I'm going to, like I said, I'm making them darker, so I'm going to put a few coats, and I'm going to give them little highlights, like they're kind of dimensional as well. Trying to make them not so perfect, and here I am making them all in rows again, so I'm really trying to make them a little more random. And they'll dry pretty quick. I'm going to put a second coat on those. 
I'm going to just, you know, carefully erase my little lines from the chalk. And that is drying. So let's see. We can use some of our markers, maybe. Just I like the Posca paint pens. They have actually have paint in the barrel. You need to give them a good shake. And I just like the way that it's actually paint more than just like a Sharpie or something. Oh, you know what, Diana? That's a fabulous idea. Is some of those self-adhesive little gemstones. That's a great idea. So there's so many ways. Like I said, I've got a whole bunch of these little uh, boards because they came a little thinner. And then I do. I am loving the look of uh, the green and the and the red. So I think a bunch of these different ways. If you had, you could put kids' names in them, maybe. Um, you could put just whatever little Valentine's saying you want. Scrolls like those tree branches inside the heart. Like, oh, the spirals like in the tree one, right? The spirals. I do love spirals too. Um, and let's see what I've saved. Some cool heart pictures here. I've done, I don't know if you saw the heart uh, segment I did maybe last week or the week before with all just the little hanging hearts, which was kind of cool. And those all had little designs in them. And I want it to be, again, not just so perfect. So I might just get my markers and you could do it with a brush too. Oh, Cindy, what I used was a dark purple. So this was a dioxazine, which I love that purple as well. I used my Tuscan red and then I used phthalo blue and green. I do love the Liquitex phthalo blue and green. They mix to make gorgeous teals. Uh, I use them for my oceans and I, I use those two colors a lot. So I just want to make sure my paint in my marker is shaken up because I don't want it to be so I think I might go and just loosely make little outlines. So I'm doing it on purpose so they're not perfect. And we, I like to go right out over the edge too. So make some like that. And some other colors maybe. Let's see, I have a pink marker. I've got all these markers. I haven't really used them that much. How many of you guys use paint markers? And what do you use them for? I know in mixed media, rock painting, people love them for the painting of the rocks. You know, you could just do like dots. I just kind of want something fun and whimsy, whimsical. Maybe a red. I have all colors, but look, I don't even see my red marker. But uh, let's see, for the pink one, maybe. That's a little bright, but. Uh, I like the ones that have little squiggles and little designs in them. You could almost paint a little heart within the heart. Let's see. A lighter pink. Let's see how that works. I'm really just working off the top of my head here. But I really am going to try some with those adhesive gemstones. That would be so cool. Maybe like something like You Are Loved would be fun written in there. Oh, Susie, let me see. You can put Oh, hey, good idea. Yes. Um, I've done some things with resin too, putting it over bits, but triple thick. I don't know. I, I've heard of it. I do not have that. And I'm going to just jot it down real quick because I will forget. And or I could look right back in the comments, but let me try. I forget who makes that. Who makes that triple thick? Is it a Mod Podge thing? I forget. Um, some other colors maybe in that heart since I can just use my just to bring some of those jewel tones in could do something like this I love to use the scallops sometimes Could look a little spattering of dots on that background. Could have gone really different on the background too. And let's put a second coat and get those jewels looking like more than just blobs. So let's put each one just a little second coat of what we had on there. That's the phthalo green. 
and the phthalo blue. Mine a little bit shine showing through. Purple, what did I do? Oops. Going out of that. Oh, something on purple on the heart, too. Oh, the little roses. Yeah, remember I did those the other day on the rooster, the chicken thing. That would be cute, too. So many choices. That's why I like having all of those wooden pieces to choose from because we could do something different. On You could do a check design, a crosshatch. Also, many ideas. Okay, let me clean the brush off it. I'm going to just do a little bit of shading on those jewels, um, too, and a couple little highlights. I know it's hard to see the Americana. Oh, okay. Oh, geez. Okay, because I use all the Americana, a lot of the craft paints. So, um, yeah. All right. So now I want to get them to look a little bit. I think it's just a little lighter color of each of them, because since it's a dark there, if I just took like on the blue, for instance, and just took a light blue and sort of just highlighted a little bit. This is, like I said, going to be rough and ready because I like that look of the whimsy. And each color I will just lighten up and do a little highlight like that. Let's get some of that purple. I don't know why I keep closing the jar of that. That's a little bit too white. I want just a light purple. Just dabbing it inside. If it's a square, I'm just kind of making a little bit of a square shape. If it's the circle, I kind of make a little commas shape. And the red ones, we'll do a little bit of pink in. And now we'll do a little light green on those green guys. I think I might want the teeniest touch of yellow into my green gems. Just warm it up a little bit. You can see for the square, like I just go in and make a little square shape, a little comma, a little half circle for the circle ones. I may even do a little white highlight to make, like we do on eyes and things, a little white highlight. Well, thanks, Cecile. This one was really kind of off the top of my head. I want to put something around them to outline them a little bit. I'll just grab some paint gray maybe. Let's try that. And let's see, just kind of a little. And it's streaky, but I kind of like to look. So I'm almost going a little bit out into uh, an outline where I'm leaving a little of the gold showing through and then just doing a quick outline. So this project, remember, you're not trying to be perfect. Don't struggle with straight lines and all that because that's not what I'm looking for here. The, the rougher and the less you think about it, the better probably. And I love that these are kind of wonky squares, wonky shapes. So I guess it's okay that the gold leaf came out a bit wonky. It was um, sort of a little bit on the fly and a little bit raggedy, but it, it, for this project, I think it's fine. Oh, you know what? I have you guys. I just thought of it. Hi, Rita. I'm glad you made it. Yay, and Gloria, thank you for popping in. I just was really running a little late because I was finishing this up, but I have designed a, a art, uh, a gratitude journal for artists. Cause I just love that whole, I'm not a big journal artist. I find it hard to sit down and, and, and do a lot of that. But if it's quick and little bullet points and like one little sentence I could, could put down every day, it helps. And when I talk to people about art and painting, their biggest uh, finding time every day, to do something. So I, I designed this little art journal that's downloadable. You can print it yourself. And it just has little prompts and ideas about finding things that you can be grateful for every day, just little small things to recognize and also tie it in with your art and little tiny prompts of things you might be able to do. It doesn't have to be done every day, but it's kind of a nice little way to incorporate art and gratitude in your day. So I have just now kind of got it all finalized and up on my website. I will share a link or just check out my page uh, because it's just a little download and it's just like a couple bucks, 250. And uh, I want to know what you think. So take a look for that. And that's why I was kind of running a little late today because I've been playing with that. It's so much fun. I did it for myself, but I really like it and it's really fun to use. And so I thought maybe I would offer it um, to you guys. 
maybe it would help you too. So can you see I'm just, I know it's a little far away. I'm just putting little white, kind of like little comma strokes almost, just little strokes in there. And just like I paint anything, when you see me painting even more of a landscape or anything, animals, start darker in the back, work forward. And so I can have a little of the dark show and some of the mid-tone and then the lights when I get to them really pop. So even though I've done the color, I did a little lighter blob there and I just put some light in there, but where those white little strokes I just made sometimes mix with the wet color, I think I'd like to go back even just with a tiny bit of pure white here and there. So that's kind of three values in those little gems. And I know that's a lot and they're teeny, but I think it just makes them look like a little bit more sparkly, I guess. So I'm just simply taking a detail brush and just a couple little daubs of some bright white here and there. And, um, oh, Cecile, thank you. Thank you. I love painting oceanscapes, but I, I love doing all sorts of things. I love birch trees. They're so simple to paint. Um, actually, you know, I thought it would be birch trees with like little hearts hanging on the branches would be cool for uh, Valentine's Day. I want to outline. My crown is really kind of shiny. I love it, but I need a little outline. Um, I could do it with my marker. Let's try it. With, let's try it with the Posca. And if I wanted more of just of a loose line, I could have done it really with just a paintbrush too. But I really kind of want it to show. And now I don't want to outline perfectly around the whole way. Can you see how I'm sort of making these lines, but I'm sort of breaking them up? I do that a lot of times when I don't want a real outliney look. So I'm kind of going along. I am not trying to be perfect around the edges, but I don't want a solid line. For one reason, if you were doing something and you wanted it to be perfect, sometimes that's very hard to accomplish. So I do it a little wonky on purpose so that people aren't looking for it to be perfect. I do see a little piece of gold leaf peeling off there. So we'll just finish that up. And I can even take a little brush or something and lift off. I see a little piece that's extra right here. Now, if you do your piece and you have a big space or the gold leaf comes off or something, you can go back when the paint is dry, add a little more adhesive and dab on your little bits or a little piece of gold. If you wanted a little gold in the background, maybe just spots of it. You could put a little brush stroke here and there of the uh, adhesive. And then when you put your uh, gold down, you're going to get it just to, like in little veins and things, which is kind of cool. I um, looks like we have three minutes left. Let us just, I want to write something in the heart just to see. Let's see, maybe uh, something. And I'm going to do it with my brush. You can do it with your marker. I'm so used to painting with my brush that I, I have. It's easier almost for me. And so we just have a few minutes. Let us put a little something something in there and again when i'm doing writing like this i do it wonky on purpose and and not straight and not all the same size for the letters on purpose so that because it's never going to be perfect and i would rather do it all kind of wonky so i could do like different sizes for my letters so i got a big y a little u a little o kind of down there and just a little bit more clean paint because I'm picking up a lot of pink in that white because my palette is as messy as my workspace here. Yeah, so I just kind of do little block letters, but I vary the sizes. And any ideas for future segments? I'm here usually on Mondays, you guys. I don't know if you caught me on Friday on my chocolate day. That was so fun that we had a special themed day on chocolate uh, on Monday. Uh, Friday, rather. I'm usually here on Monday. So that's kind of cool. Um, I might even, because, you know, we have a minute. So I'm going to say goodbye now in my minute. And I'll see you guys next week. I'll share the link if anyone's interested in the journal. But maybe a few little white uh, strokes here and there just as a little something. I'll just end it because I will go and go and play with it. But I think a whole collection of these would be pretty cool. And I can't wait to do it on that dark green. For my edges, I just usually paint it a Payne's Gray. Or, or you could paint it the color of your surface. You can turn it over there too. So I will encourage you guys to stay tuned for the next crafter up on Craft Around the Clock. And you just need to refresh your page after a minute. Um, Rita.
Oh, really? You you saw me do it. Um, oh, the color, it was just slapped on. And I can show you that because I'll see you soon. Anyways, it was just kind of slapped on. I'm going to run so you can see the next person. Thank you for joining me. See you next week.